You're listening to Simple Roots Radio, episode 73. And today we're talking about the one key hormone and mastering your weight. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to Simple Roots Radio. I'm your host, Alexa, and this is the place to get healthy, live happy, and find joy. I'm so glad you're here. Today on the podcast, we're continuing our series all about our hormones and how to work with them instead of against them. If you've been tuning in or following along on Instagram or Facebook, where I'm doing this entire hormonal series, then you know that working with our hormones is the key to lasting health. It's not all about diets or giving up, restricting, and depriving and starving our body, but in fact, working with our body to find lasting health. Because at the end of the day, our hormones are not the villain of our story, but the hero. And once we start to understand how our hormones work and we start looking at ourselves as individuals and unique and beautiful, we can make great changes and great strides in our health. So if you haven't been following along, then you're going to want to go back to episode number 71, check out that podcast, and then hop on Instagram, find me at Alexa Sherm or Facebook at Simple Roots Wellness to get all of the hormonal tips that I've been sharing. Today, we have a new one, which goes along with our fun fact of the day, which I'm moving to the end of the podcast. It used to be right here in the beginning, but I'm kind of transitioning that to the end. One, to give you good incentive to stick around because they are really interesting and today's is no different. In fact, it talks about feet, your feet, and how it impacts your hormones. Super fascinating stuff. And it's also going to be our quick tip over on Instagram and Facebook today. But stick around because the fun facts are now at the end so that we can get started right away with our show. But before we get started, I have one more announcement. I know we've been talking all about hormones and it can be overwhelming and crazy and how do you put this into practice and how do you break all the diet myths, which today we're going to hopefully break a few more of those diet myths down so that you don't have to live trapped to that anymore. But if you want to take back your hormones, if you want help with that, I do have a very successful five-day hormonal reset, which I think you're going to love. In fact, I love it so much that I continuously do this about four times a year. I do this little five-day hormonal reset. I mean, it's only five days. It's super quick, yet really, really, really effective. And in fact, your entire family can do it with you because there's no supplements required. It's literally a lifestyle reset. It takes into account your diet, your mindset, your exercise habits, and just your lifestyle in general, all into this five-day reset that can make great, great changes. In fact, testimonials I have include helping people get pregnant, increasing libido, helping people lose weight five to 10, even 12 pounds in five days. Not that it's all about weight loss, but in the end, really what I'm going for is just helping people feel more vibrant and end this lifestyle of just surviving and put you in a category of thriving. So that's what we're after. If you're interested in the five-day hormonal reset, you have to join us on March 5th as we start this process together. So to get all the information about the five-day hormonal reset and get a one-day sample so you can check it out for free without committing, head on over to the show notes at simplerootswellness.com slash 073. I promise this is the least threatening way to reset your hormones. And it gives you so many great ideas on how to foster these habits for a lifetime that make you feel good. It really just creates self-awareness and so many changes in your life. I know you're gonna love it. So again, head on over to the show notes, simplerootswellness.com slash 073 to get all the information. Click to join me so that we can go through this together starting on March 5th. Okay, now back to the show. Today is all about the hormone that's in control of your weight and your cravings. It's called leptin. Some call it the forgotten hormone, but let's be real. It was only found in 1994. So let's just call it the unknown hormone. And today we're going to try and put some of that to rest and give you as many facts as there are about leptin. So today we're going to talk about what leptin is, how it regulates your weight, and how can we fix it? Because this really is becoming a huge issue in our society. In fact, so many people who have thyroid issues really, in the end, maybe just have a leptin problem. It's not maybe a hormonal problem, but a leptin problem. And we're going to talk today about how leptin interacts with your thyroid and how you can kind of start to see these missing links in the puzzle. So if you've been struggling with your thyroid or you think you have a hormonal issue, but you've never been able to diagnose it, leptin could be your problem. Hopefully, this is the podcast 
that helps you put the thoughts and philosophies that calories matter, that it's all about how much you eat and how much you burn, that it's about restriction and deprivation and starvation. Just put it all to rest and know that there's so much more to this, and that includes leptin. So what is leptin? Leptin, again, was discovered in 1994 after years and years and years of research focused on finding a hormone in the body that affected body weight and calorie intake. To this point, they really had no idea what was controlling and regulating body weight and calorie intake. So again, when all these calorie requirements came into the picture, this was definitely the days before leptin was on the map. So to give them some credit, when the food pyramid was created, we really had no idea what people needed. But we started to mess with it and we started to see significant changes in a negative way on our health. In fact, when the food pyramid was released and when calories came into the picture, we just saw our weight skyrocket. But at the same time, the food industry really picked up and started taking off. And so we started to have the days of processed foods and really poorly processed foods like margarine and trans fat, things that are really coming off our market today that we know with absolute clarity are awful for our body. So they kind of went together. We learned a lot and therefore they went searching after a hormone that really affected body weight because at the end of the day, they really wanted to create a powerful weight loss supplement. But of course, that's never happened. But what they did find was leptin, a hormone circulating in our body that's being released from our adipose tissue. So our fat cells. Now, we're going to talk about fat in a second. But what they found with with leptin was that it had great control on how much body fat stores that we had on our body and how great our desire to eat was. What they found was that low leptin signal to our body to slow our metabolism and increase our desire to eat, where high leptin levels signal to our body to increase our metabolism and decrease our body's desire to eat. That's because when leptin is high, it signals to the body, to the brain that, hey, we have plenty of body fat stores right now. We really don't need to have any excess. Why don't you up the metabolism, decrease my desire to eat because we are doing just fine. It's a survival mechanism. But when leptin levels are low, all these survival alarms start going off and our body says, okay, we don't have enough. If there's a famine, we are not going to be okay. So it slows metabolism down. It increases your desire and your drive to eat. And therefore, it packs on the body weight as quickly as it can. So of course, they wanted to create a supplement that increased the amount of leptin that was in our body. So they did a study and they injected leptin into their survey participants. And what they found was that only 9 to 10% of the respondents found a positive impact from higher leptin levels. The other 90% didn't have any impact. And in fact, they just continued to gain weight. So what is the problem, right? Why, Why do we know that an increase in leptin causes your body's metabolism to go up and your hunger to go down, but injecting excess leptin in our body didn't have that effect. And that's where they found leptin resistance, similar to insulin resistance, where our body's making enough leptin, but it's not responding to it. Just like insulin, our body's making enough, in fact, more than enough, and yet our body's not responding. Like it's knocking on the door and no one's coming to it. The phone is ringing, no one's answering. So why? Why? Right? So maybe at the end of the day, it's leptin resistance that we need to talk about, just like insulin resistance, and they all kind of go hand in hand. So we're going to back up a little bit before we get into all of that and just break down what leptin is. But in order to understand leptin, we have to understand our fat cells. So here's the deal about fat cells. I know a lot of people think that they just hold fat, which they do. Our fat cells are really intricate. In fact, they don't just hold fat. They hold toxins and other things. It's a really safe mechanism for that. But not only that, our adipose tissue is actually an active endocrine gland. So yes, our fat is definitely a part of our hormonal flow and our endocrine system. Our adipose tissue makes things like inflammatory chemicals and hormones, including the one hormone we're talking about today called leptin. Essentially what leptin is doing or what our fat cells are capable of doing is always being in contact with our brain. And leptin is one of the main hormones that signals from our fat cells or our adipose tissue to our brain, specifically the hypothalamus, to let our brain know, do we have enough fat cells? Will we survive a famine if one should come? Are we going to be okay? 
So essentially, leptin makes that phone call to the brain, and your hypothalamus then determines how much leptin is coming in, which is based on how many body fat cells that you have, and decides, okay, we can either increase your metabolism or we're going to decrease it, which thus sends a signal to our hunger hormones, ghrelin. So leptin and ghrelin, you've probably heard about them. Leptin just is known as the satiety hormone, where ghrelin is our hunger hormone. So when leptin is high, we're pretty satisfied. Ghrelin goes down. But when leptin is down, ghrelin goes up and signals our body to eat. So like I mentioned, leptin is produced in response to the amount of fat cells that we have in our body. The more fat you have, technically the more leptin you're making. So you might be thinking, okay, but I'm overweight. I'm trying to lose weight, but I'm hungry all the time and my metabolism seems to be taking. You're telling me that when leptin is high, technically our metabolism should go up and our hunger should go down. So the more fat I have, the less hungry I should be and the more I should burn. Okay, that is technically in a good, healthy working body what is happening. However, again, we have leptin resistance and that could be you. Whether you're overweight or not, leptin resistance is a real thing and it comes in many, many shapes and forms which we're gonna talk about. But again, so fat cells produce leptin in proportion to the body fat levels. The more fat you have, the more leptin you make. Once leptin enters your bloodstream, leptin is released from these fat cells. It enters your bloodstream via the circulatory system and it binds to proteins in the blood, which then allows it to pass the blood-brain barrier traveling to the hypothalamus. Leptin lets your hypothalamus know when it's time for you to stop eating and then it increases your metabolic rate in order to achieve the energy balance that we're looking for known as homeostasis. So leptin tells us when you should be eating, when you should stop eating, how much body fat you have, how much you'll store, how great your metabolism is. All of these things are regulated by this hormone produced in your adipose tissue called leptin. So when we have a good, healthy body, a regulated hormonal flow, what we'll see happen is that leptin will be released from our adipose tissue. It will travel to the brain. It will say, hey, fat cells are sufficient. We can go ahead, amp up metabolism, decrease your hunger, because at this point, there's really no fear that there's going to be a famine. There's really no fear of survival. We're doing good. Things are going well. That's what we want to get into, a pattern of hey, things are going really good. We're really healthy. We don't have a fear. We're not worried about uh, a lack of trust. We're not worried about a famine. So go ahead, up, up, amp up the metabolism, increase your energy, and feel good, right? Now, the problem comes in is when we either have low leptin or leptin resistance. So there are two different things, right? And one can lead to the other. Low leptin can technically lead to leptin resistance and vice versa. But here's the thing about low leptin. We're going to break this down first. Low leptin technically is only found in people who are really, really starving. We don't see, at least in America, very often in this day and age. But you can have voluntary famine, right? When we had this great idea that we should restrict calories and work out more, right? Which never would have happened in a true famine, right? If you were really starving, you probably wouldn't work out on top of that. Like you would do anything in your power to conserve energy. So you would be in a rested state, not a hyperactive state while you're starving yourself. These are voluntary functions which create mistrust in your body. These are actions or voluntary things that we do that try to work against our hormone, right? When we restrict calories and when we starve ourselves and when we um, restrict macronutrients, all we're doing to our body is creating mistrust, right? We're trying to do something for our body that we don't feel like it's capable of doing. But that's not the answer. Our body is more than capable. And in fact, it will always win. So if you play that game, if you restrict calories and you go into a voluntary famine, it's probably not going to last long before you end up heavier than you ever have been. And the reason is specifically because of leptin. Your body hates to be starved. It hates to be in the absence of food. It hates to be mistrust. And it hates to have this miscommunication between what you're doing, what you think your body should be doing, and what it's actually capable of doing. So we have to know that our body is more than capable. But what happens is when we have low leptins, when we have a voluntary famine or an involuntary famine, we have insufficient fat stores, right? 
which then with less fat stores, we have less leptin entering our bloodstream and ultimately reaching the hypothalamus. This signals to your hypothalamus that things are not going well. We don't have enough energy to sustain ourselves. We are in survival mode. We don't like it here. And so what your hypothalamus does is it then slows your metabolism and it increases your appetite. So it starts sending out all this ghrelin to increase your appetite because your body wants food. It wants nourishment. And then that point, it wants all the energy it could get. That could be some of you. And where the injections for increasing leptin actually saw results was only in people who had low leptin, right? And when we go back and look at the research. The problem is, is that there's so many of us who have plenty of fat stores, yet we're hungry all the time, right? Our metabolism is slow. So how do we increase that? This is where we get into leptin resistance. It's basically the same as insulin resistance where you have so many fat cells, so much leptin being plumped into your bloodstream that your brain just shuts down. It, it disconnects the phone. It closes the door. And no matter how much you knock, No matter how many times leptin calls, it's not getting in. Like the brain is no longer accepting the signals of leptin, which causes everything to go out of whack. So what causes leptin resistance, right? What's this difference between that? Well, it really can stem from just a misuse in calories. Either overeating beyond normal maintenance levels can harm your body's ability to distinguish whether you have, whether your fat levels are too high or not and your receptors in the brain become numb to this, or under eating so much that your body is in a voluntary famine and therefore then goes into a phase of overeating beyond normal energy maintenance. So you go from under eating to binging and this back and forth just causes this mistrust in the body. These signals get all thrown all out of whack and your brain really doesn't know what to trust and what not to trust. Other things that can cause leptin resistance are caffeine right? A lack of sleep. We've talked about this so many times on here is the importance to sleep more than anything else you could do and your health is sleep, right? The, the, the critical component to resetting your hormones comes from how deeply and how much you're sleeping. So we have to be sleeping and therefore why caffeine has such a negative impact on your hormones for other reasons too. But one of them is just the disruption in sleep. Whether you think it disrupts your sleep or not, it takes caffeine a good 24 hours to leave the body and therefore is having a 24 hour effect on your hormonal flow. And we know that every single night, the majority of our hormones are resetting themselves, specifically leptin and ghrelin. So if you're not reaching deep sleep, you're not resetting these hormones and therefore things are thrown out of whack right away. Just think about this in your own life, right? Like this is a pretty obvious one. If you're lacking sleep and you have been for a period of time, usually your body will start crying out for energy in any way possible. And most of the time, that means your body's craving all the foods and all the unhealthy foods, right? You lose some sleep, you wake up earlier, you're really tired. And so you just grab whatever you can. It's like the vicious cycle that never stops of I'm tired. And so I'm going to eat bad food, which puts me on the sugar roller coaster, which means I crave all the bad food, right? All the time, all the sugary, high fat processed foods. And I can't really get off of this. And I don't really have energy to make anything healthy or to get out and move, which can actually give me true energy. So you just continue with this vicious cycle, needing more caffeine, disrupting your flow even more. So something has to break that cycle. So getting deeper sleep is huge. And we're going to talk about that and how to reset your leptin. So other things that can cause leptin resistance besides lack of sleep, caffeine, overeating, undereating, stress. Cortisol, the cortisol response in the body can cause, again, excess fat stores to be produced, which cause excess leptin, even if you're not eating, which is so fascinating about stress is that literally you can gain weight just sitting in your office chair simply without eating because of the cortisol glucose response and the way that cortisol frees up stored glucose and converts it back into body fat stores, which then cause leptin to increase which can cause leptin resistance. Other things include wheat. There's a ton of research coming out about lectins and wheat and the way that it interferes with leptin in the body and in the brain. And so if you feel like you have leptin resistance or you feel like something is going on with leptin, then maybe you could look at wheat as a source or try giving up gluten and wheat products and see if that helps. And one other one that's big in our food system is MSG. 
MSG tastes delicious. It can be found in a lot of Asian foods or um, processed foods. It, it kind of gives it a nice salty taste. It literally is addictive and it makes your body want more and more and more. That's why um, food manufacturers have added it is because we like it so much and our body craves it so much. But this, again, can, and can interfere with the leptin response in our brain. So again, some of the, le- the things that can cause leptin resistance and maybe some things that we want to try to avoid or eliminate are wheat, MSG, caffeine, lack of sleep, stress, overeating or undereating, and one more is an excess in fructose. Now, I know fructose is found in fruit, right? In vegetables, it's the main sugar in those. We're talking high fructose corn syrup or excess amounts of fructose. So trying to avoid that as much as you can. But I want to go back just a little bit because I feel like I missed this when I was talking. And that's the relation between leptin and your thyroid. Now, here's the thing. If we treat a hormone badly, there are going to be consequences. And we can see that with leptin in a thyroid gland. When we overuse or mistreat our body, we can see disruptions in all hormonal flow. Like think all these recommendations for less fat, less calories, less carbs, right? The strategy can only go so far. Over time, calorie deprivation contributes to lower leptin levels and slows down your metabolism, making it virtually impossible to lose all the weight you want. So what is the relation of leptin to your thyroid? The thyroid and leptin have like this precarious but meaningful relationship. Your thyroid secretes hormone that act throughout the body, influencing metabolism, growth, and development. And the amount of leptin available to your brain has the major impact on how many thyroid hormones are released into the body. So you see that? So really leptin comes before your thyroid hormones. So leptin tells the brain, okay, this is how much body fat stores we have. This is kind of where we're standing. And your brain then tells your thyroid hormones to release the other hormones that will act throughout your body, influencing, again, metabolism, growth, and development. So here's a quote to remember. Leptin holds the purse strings on your energy spend based on our available good supply. When your body can't use leptin efficiently, it goes into a fake starvation mode known as leptin resistance, which throws this whole monkey wrench in your thyroid function. Leptin tells the brain, which tells the thyroid releasing hormone in your hypothalamus to set the thyroid hormones on low energy. Otherwise, the body may perish from starvation. So even in leptin resistance, right? We have all this body fat stores. You would think that we have plenty of leptin to tell our body, hey, things are going well. We don't need to store excess fat. We need to up our metabolism, not decrease it. But unfortunately, it decreases that. And then it has this effect on the thyroid releasing hormones that tell it to lower the energy, right? Like it has this effect. Once leptin's knocking on that door and it's not answering, it starts to have this effect on the thyroid releasing hormones, which tell the body, hey, start preserving energy, lower that energy. We might not make it here. Like things aren't going well. It depresses your metabolism so that you can survive a faulty famine, making weight loss nearly impossible and even promoting weight gain. So the question becomes, if you have a thyroid problem, And it's undiagnosable, right? Your levels are fine. You think that something's wrong, but they can't seem to find anything. Maybe it's not technically a thyroid problem stemming from a thyroid stimulating hormone, but it goes all the way back to leptin, the hormone that comes before your thyroid that signals to your brain, which tells your thyroid what to do. Maybe leptin is the problem and not your actual thyroid. So if you feel discouraged because you've done all the tests and nothing's come back and yet you can't seem to figure out why you have excess weight, why you have low energy, why you feel sluggish and just tired all the time, why you can't sleep well, maybe it's a leptin issue. So how do we fix leptin? How do we get over leptin and really step into health? It really goes with all the other recommendations for anything. We're going to talk specifically, but the big ones are just seen in lasting health in general. And that's what's so cool about this is that, yes, this is individualized. And that's why there are no diet pills in the market that work. This is specific for you. So taking these and working them into your body and listening to your body to find out what's working, what's not working, and know that all these requirements or all these things that I'm about to tell you are going to have a good effect in your body. 
maybe some of them don't seem as practical or um, beneficial and powerful as others, but they're all having positive impacts in your body. So you can do any and all of these, but again, if you need help, you gotta check out the five-day hormonal reset because resetting your hormones can happen and that can happen quickly if you take them all in and use them. So up first, how do we reset your leptin sensitivity? So we don't crave anything so that we can increase our metabolism and technically decrease our weight set point, which again is a whole other podcast that we will have to talk about at some time. But I'm going to give you 10 tips to fixing leptin sensitivity. The overall chain theme though of all of this is eliminating toxins and resetting your hormones because that's what your body needs. Tip number one is intermittent fasting or cyclical fasting. I want to get an expert on to talk specifically about cyclical fasting because I think it is really, really powerful. But what it means is using intermittent fasting, which was a separate podcast. I'll link it up in the show notes. I want to believe, I believe it was episode number six. I mean, it was really early on, but intermittent fasting is powerful and resetting your hormones because your body needs a time and a place to rest. So having space, creating space for our body to be in the absence of food is always beneficial. So doing the 12 hour window, making sure that you do that, maybe even pushing it down to an eight or a 10 hour window, meaning you consume all of your food within an eight hour to a 12 hour range and nothing more. Cyclical fasting is doing a 24 hour fast a week, if not doing a 24 hour fast bi-weekly. Initially, when I was reading this and researching this and trying it out for myself, isn't this a voluntary famine when I'm fasting? But here's the thing. There's a difference when we're just eating few calories or we're just ingesting few calories when your body's ready for them and when your body's in a fasted state and doesn't need food. So fasting actually helps our body to respond better to the food that we do consume when we consume it. So it's not about just restriction of calories. It's doing it in the right manner of Um, doing the cyclical fasting or combined with intermittent fasting. So essentially you do the 12 hour window six days a week and one day you just do a full 24 hour fast. It has great, great positive benefits inside the body and it'll help you beat cravings. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, specifically with leptin resistance is don't work out before breakfast. I am such a fan too of working out in the morning. I think that there's something so powerful about waking up and just getting it out of the way. But if you feel like leptin resistance or you have a hormonal issue going on is the problem and a culprit, then try moving your workouts from the morning to the evening. The reason for this is we just don't want to add any more stress right away as you start out your day than we have to. And so changing your workout from Um, 5 a.m. to more like 5 p.m. Doing it in the later afternoons can make a huge difference. When we talk about breakfast, I know when we talk about intermittent fasting, I'm a really big fan also of pushing your breakfast back. But if you have leptin sensitivity issues, technically they find that people perform better or respond better if they consume their breakfast within 30 minutes of waking up. 30 minutes to an hour, whatever that looks like. But the bigger and more important component with breakfast is that make sure It's a majority of protein and healthy fats. We really want to provide that because again, leptin responds or has a bigger impact when we have insulin in the picture, right? They kind of go together. And so carbohydrates or high proportion of carbohydrates and processed carbohydrates are really causing a lot of doom in our leptin resistance category. So trying to consume breakfast within 30 minutes of waking up, 30 minutes to an hour, and having more protein and fat. So those are the first three tips. Tip number four is to sleep. Like sleep, 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 sleep. How do we sleep better? One is you could stop eating like four to five hours before bed. That's technically ideal. However, I just recommend stop eating at least three hours before you would fall asleep. Three to four, five obviously is better. And then try to be in bed by 10. They say the most critical hours for resetting your hormones are between the hours of 10 and two. So trying to get deep, deep sleep there and that time. So going to bed no later than 10 and aiming to get deep sleep. Tip number five is to stop counting calories. It's not going to work. It never will. It really never has. So start focusing on quality of calories more and less on the quantity and really just listening to your body using foods that fill you up and provide a lot of satiety. So again, those real foods, protein and healthy fats Tip number six is add healthy fats at every single meal. 
Healthy fats are the starting point of all hormones in our body. Without enough healthy fats, our, our hormonal flow is just gonna be out of whack in general. So we're talking adding things like coconut oil or avocados, olives, olive oil, avocado oil, egg yolks, fatty fish. There's so many great sources of healthy fats that we could be adding and we should be adding to our everyday life. Number seven is add collagen to your daily diet. Collagen is, again, those vital proteins that we don't really find in any other sources in our body or any other sources in our diet and proteins that really have such a huge impact on our overall health. So add collagen to your diet. Number eight is reduce food rewards. Now we have a lot of food rewards, right? We do this all the time. We do it in kids. If you do X, Y, and Z, then you can have a pizza party. If you do X, Y, and Z, then we'll have an ice cream party. We do it as adults, right? If I work out and I'm really good all day, then I can have ice cream at night. Whatever it is, right? We reward ourselves with food, but this food reward changes our brain chemistry and changes the hormonal flow. So stop rewarding yourself with food. Food is a means of life. It should be something we look forward to and we really enjoy, a sociable thing that we do, but it shouldn't be a reward for us. It shouldn't be a reward for doing good. Find other rewards. Uh, again, it's changing the way our hypothalamus is working for or against us. Number nine is move. Move your body because an increase in muscle mass will naturally increase your metabolism. It will, for survival, your body can use muscle just as well as it can use fat. And so as long as you have something on your body, you're doing yourself a favor by creating more trust in your body. So building muscle mass, which is metabolically active, will help increase leptin sensitivity, making your body more aware that you are in a safe place, that you're doing good. So moving more. And when you move, don't just focus on cardio. Cardio in itself is a really big stress. So if you're just going out to run just to run, if you have leptin resistance or a hormonal imbalance, that is doing more harm than it's doing good. So focus on if you move, moving 30 minutes a day, you know, walking, yoga, swimming, that's all great. We should be doing that every day. But on top of that, trying to do some kind of high intensity strength with like fast, quick cardio movements, but not for a long time, you know? So we're talking those 20 to 30 minute routines that don't take a ton of time, but are really, really effective. So that's how we should move. And number 10 goes back to just eliminating toxins and doing a reset. Our body needs this. This is not just something that people are talking about because they have a program that can make a lot of money. Our body needs this. In fact, our body's working daily on detoxifying ourselves, on trying to reset those hormones. But so many times it's influenced by so many toxins and so many things that our body can literally not keep up. So how can we help our body to naturally detoxify? How can we do a hard reset on our body just like you would on your computer, right? It has to happen for our computer to run smoothly and efficiently. It has to happen for our body. These hard reset just mean you eliminate toxins for a period of time. You eat really, really well. You foster a really, really healthy lifestyle. Like you are aware and in tune to everything that you're doing and everything you're providing your body. And that is having a beneficial impact. These hard resets specifically, like if you look at my hormonal reset, these hard resets, whether you're doing uh, a small one, like my five day hormonal reset, four five, six times a year and uh, a big cleanse once a year, like that has lasting effects, lasting positive effects. So say you do this five day hormonal reset that lasts for months, right? Like that trickles on for months and months and months. Just like you don't have to restart your computer every single day for it work, to work well. I mean, you could, but it, it just helps. It helps it to run smoothly for weeks after the fact. And that's what's so cool. If you start doing this right, if you start looking at your hormones and fostering your hormones and working with your body instead of against them, you can develop all kinds of healthy habits in a really short amount of time that have lasting impact. And we're not talking even adding tons of medications or supplements or any at all. Like these are lifestyle and diet changes that can have lasting, impactful, powerful impacts on your body and it can change everything. Like I said, like it still baffled me when I got the first testimonial that my five day hormonal reset, five days, helped someone who was infertile for over a year get pregnant within a month. Like crazy, right? Like it's mind boggling, but that's how capable our body is if we give it the space, if we give it the environment, if we give it the nutrients 
and the nourishing life that it needs to do that. And that's all a reset should be. It shouldn't be this strange, crazy, another diet strategy, but it's simply allowing space and the right nourishment for your body to do the job that it is more than capable, the job that it is designed to do. So those are the 10 tips. Simple things, right? Things that we might have to think about, but it's just habits that can really change the way that we live and increase our longevity, increase our energy and decrease body weight. You can find this entire leptin protocol inside my five day hormonal reset, which again, we're going together through in March 5th. So I hope you go over the show notes, simplerootswellness.com slash 073 to learn more about that. Also in the show notes, I'm going to be listing all 10 things and I'm going to be talking more specifically about cyclical fasting. Um, and how you can do that and how you can incorporate that into your week. Because here's the thing about leptin resistance is our body loves consistency, but it also craves change. So it likes to see these changes in our body. And that change can actually help lower your weight set point, which if you want to learn more about a weight set point, let me know because we can do a whole podcast on that and how you can like how we're all designed with this weight set point, how we can increase it and then how we can lower it. It's a process. It's not overnight success. It's not this fast weight loss, but it's a process over time of helping your body to lose weight. Because remember, if we lose weight too quickly, you're going to naturally increase your body's signals. Like leptin is going to decrease and it's going to increase your body's signals to have you crave more and eat more and slow your metabolism down. Again, why we can see diets not working. We can see that time and time again. So Head on over to the show notes to get all the information from today's show. I know that was a very scientific, a lot to take in, but no, it's a powerful hormone. And if we start working with them, great, great, great things will change. Again, you can get all 10 tips over in the show notes, all the information about the five day hormonal reset and the one day hormone reset to try out for free. Head on over to the show notes at simplerswellness.com slash 073. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Alexis Sherm and Facebook at Simple Roots Wellness, where I'm going to be talking more about leptin, leptin resistance, how to fix it, and all the hormonal tips that you need to keep on this journey of just supporting our body and nourishing our body. It is so powerful. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, before we get to our quick tip of the day, don't forget to rate and review the show. It literally is a lifeblood of the show. It means the world to me and it takes two minutes out of your day. You only have to do it once, but this is huge and helping other people find the show who otherwise wouldn't hear of it. I read every comment and I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting me and finding such great information and life changes here. Like I said, I would be so honored if you would leave a rating and review. To leave a rating and review, just head on over to simplerootswellness.com slash review And iTunes will pop up and you'll be able to leave that honest rating and review. And while you're there, don't forget to hit subscribe to the show because once you subscribe to the show, you'll be the first to hear when a new show releases and it will just show up in your feed. So you don't have to come to my blog and click back. Like it's just easy and simple and efficient. So subscribe to the show. You can listen to it in your car while you're folding laundry, wherever you want. It's that easy. So again, leave a rating or review, hit subscribe. I'm so thankful for that. And now, Before we go, your quick fact of the day. Okay, so hormones and your feet. Like, how am I going to pull this all together? Here's the thing. The quick fact of the day is that your foot, on the sole of your foot, it has 1,300 nerve endings per square inch. Like, take that in. There's 1,300 nerve endings per square inch on the bottom of your feet. So what's the big deal about that, right? Well, They don't really know what all these nerve endings are doing on the bottom of our feet, but I can show you there's a big, big reason. One big thing that I'm going to encourage you to do, which is also going to be the hormonal tip you'll see over on Instagram and Facebook for today, is something called earthing. And it's essentially a grounding mechanism, right? Like our bodies are just electrical beings. Um, We're constantly transferring energy in and out, like just eating, right? Like that's all energy movement. Um, And one of the best ways for us to get energy is through the soles of our feet where all those nerve endings are. And so earthing is basically connecting your body to a source of energy like the earth. Okay, so like our best source of energy is the earth or the sun. The sun is actually the best source, but the sun provides energy for the earth. And when we walk on that in bare feet, you guys think I'm sounding like a crazy person that this really, really has a big impact on your body. So you take off your shoes and your socks and you walk around on the ground 
and your bare feet, you are actually absorbing energy from the earth. You're having what they call a grounding effect on the earth and it's having great hormonal balance and it's causing great hormonal benefit inside your body. So it's causing energy. It's causing an influx of positive or beneficial hormones and just helping to ease your mood, reduce anxiety, have more energy, decrease weight, increase libido, all of these things, literally just from walking around outside in your bare feet. Now here in Iowa, there's like snow. There's a good six inches of snow. So earthing is a little bit harder this time of the year, but when it warms up, even if the ground is cold, to walk around barefoot. You can't do this in shoes because the rubber soles of shoes stops the electrical current, right? Like it doesn't allow the current from the earth to enter your body. There are moccasins that um, have leather soles. Those you can walk around in and have the benefits of early. Again, I've always heard that you can't do it on cement. Some people think cement's fine. I just say that if you're gonna earth outside, you just need to walk around in the sand or the grass with or the dirt without any shoes on. Now, some of you clean freaks are thinking she is crazy. I'm never gonna do it, try it. Like 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, it really can add so much energy. So that's called earthing, makes a huge impact. There's other ways to earth. There's things called earthing sheets and earthing mats, things that you can sleep on that you just plug into the ground um, in a, an electrical outlet and it just grounds you from the earth that way. And I've heard people never sleep better. So there are tons and tons of benefits of earthing. I'm gonna talk more about that over on Instagram and Facebook. So head on over there to do that. In the meantime, here's to taking it one day at a time, working with your hormones instead of against them.